My name is Jack Hope. I own all these buildings. Unfortunately, I'd like to kind of move on, but I got them and I've got them fixed up, or had them fixed up more than they are now. But the hotel was next door here, was the first century building in town after they sold the lots. They had a uh, little log cabin over there as a room. It was the first courthouse not uh, in the state. That was probably built around 189 or something like that. And <coughs> that building was two floors high and just came out to about this far. Then in the 1850s or so, they moved those three, three floor, they built a three floor high brick structure, which is there. Then in the 1850s, they moved it out to the sidewalk. And then in the 1890s, they put the fourth floor on. And when they put the fourth floor on, they extended it out over the sidewalk and had, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of just bank walls there now. But <clears throat> there's three quarter inch steel rods that go from the top. They dropped them down and then built that uh, frame on that and built those uh, 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 pr those structures on that uh, stick out over the sidewalk. And that's what eventually became a problem that I never completely refixed. But also then that hotel, uh, this building was built about 1830s. And, and when they built the hotel, all four floors on it, then that is a common wall. Believe it or not, this building uh, you had to buy in three pieces. And you had the uh, <coughs> part where the, uh, the other side of that wall was one deed, then this here was another deed for two floors high. But the third floor is, uh, I'll show you, you get up there's a big ballroom, and that was, there's another deed for that. Now, when you pay the taxes, uh, you get the, the taxes on that slow, but that's the one that has the roof. <laughs> there's, the, neither of these two buildings only go two stories high on the deed. And of course, as I was gonna point out, the uh, hotel next door, <clears throat> Anyway, my name is Travis Hong. Um, I actually, I'm just a tenant of Jack's here. I, I've been with him for almost five years now, and you can't find a better guy. But um, this is very old buildings, but you're really going to enjoy this. I, if you love history and historic antiques and stuff, this is this is uh, this is your dream right here. So, in my eyes, I love it. This is one of my favorite places, actually. This is where they used to do the weddings, uh, dances, you know, whatever somebody rented, rented out for. Um, one of the interesting things that I still am trying to figure out, it's been painted over, but somewhere, or all over this wall, is writing. I don't know who did it, I don't know where it came from. Now we can't go up there, but this place had an elevator. And up in that room is the elevator. It's still sitting up there, the um, pulley system, the mechanical system for the elevator. Really cool. Um, if you ever curious what the price of a hotel room was here, for instance, in 1960, it cost you three dollars to stay in this hotel. Um, this closet is completely full of old receipts. Um, now, I don't know how true this is, but I don't know if anybody's aware of who uh, Donald Lytle is, Lytle is, but Johnny Paycheck, he's a country singer. Uh, he got put in jail here in Holland County for shooting a man right over about a block away. Um, Willie Nelson and George Jones. 
and Waylon Jennings came and bailed him out. And rumor has it that they stayed here. I don't know if that's true or not because I can't, I can't line up the timing. I can't find the receipts for that time frame. So one day I'll find it. Um, what was this room for? Now this was just an addition to the ballroom. Uh, this is kind of what they used as a dining area and then they would do. But now up here, that's where the elevator control room was. Uh, back in the prohibition days, um, they used to, uh, you couldn't obviously drink alcohol. Um, this was the alcohol room. Um, so this is where they held their poker, play, their poker. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I actually found some documents that tell about some of the poker players and some of the stuff that happened in this room. But this was their peephole. So you had to have a secret password to knock. Um, I wish I knew what the knock was, but. So this was the old bar, lounge, and uh, this up here, I believe, was the dance floor. So the first thing to know about opera houses, and they were mostly a Midwest thing, from Nebraska down through Kentucky, and Kansas, back to like Pennsylvania. And opera houses were like the first, if you want to call it, media center. They only really existed from about 1895 to about 1910, 15 years. They didn't they weren't around long. And the reason for that is when they came into being like this one, this one was built in 1894. i give you an idea how fast they got stuff up. This whole thing was built in one year. Today, this building would take four years to do. But, and the Mr. Bell, who owned the Bell's Foundry here, who made all the bells, very wealthy, wanted to bring some culture, do something nice for Hillsboro. So he built this. Well, Opera houses um, were not, they weren't just opera, they were all kinds of things, vaudeville shows, different things. And so you had, uh, people came from far and wide to come to these. And they were all staged performances, as you will see over here in a minute. Well, what happened was, in 1895, opera houses were a big deal. And they went along from to 1900, 1905, 1910. All of a sudden, about 1910, something called the movies got invented, film. And the opera houses freaked out and said, oh my God, what are we going to do? And film was immediately putting opera houses out of business because they were all live stage shows. That was the only entertainment you'd get. So... Opera houses quickly try to patch things and throw up a little projection booth on the third floor, which I'll show you, and then they would take their screen and pull it down and show movies. Well, that lasted, and that kept them alive for about another five years, ten years. Then all the movies came out with CinemaScope and Panavision and Stereo, and these places just couldn't compete. So they all started closing. They became everything from target ranges, because they were big. They would have people would open target ranges. Uh, they would have roller rinks, some of them would turn into. Some of them would just get gutted and torn down. This one, uh, for example, they turned to boxing matches. They had major regional boxing in here up till 1925. So that just gives you an idea. So. The opera house was two flights of stairs. You can see there was only one stairs when you came up. The other one was cut out probably in the 1960s down there because it just wasn't needed. And they used that where they took out the stairs to make like a little business, a little alcove. So when you were coming to the opera house in about 1900, 1895, you'd come up the stairs, you'd come to this ticket window. Now I don't have it like mounted in here because it's a little tricky, but this is the original window. It was a little ticket window that it opened up, opened up, and you would buy your ticket from the lady, and you would buy your ticket here when they were closed. This thing would close down, and you'd buy your ticket. So at that point, you come in now, but you came in at this point, so depending on your price, your ticket, you went up the stairs to the balcony, where we'll go in a few minutes or you'd come in here. 
and you can see where these things were. These were like covered with glass in the day, and this would have like the things coming up, the posters, what would be showing, coming up soon. There was no electricity. All this electric was added like 15 years later because electricity was suddenly invented. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, let's just throw some lights in. Uh, this was not stuccoed either. This was an effort. This would have just been plain plaster walls. Uh, very Midwest looking, plain plaster walls with tin ceiling. These were the original seats that were here. Um, they did a lot of things here. I mean, it was up until the all high school commencements for Hillsborough were done up here until about 1950s. And then they started having up at what was then the new high school, or maybe the 30s they stopped the commencements. But they did all the high school commencements here and a lot of, uh, a lot of other community functions. And they would, sh yeah, it was. And then they would show the movie right out where there's little windows on the screen. And they would just do it like that. But before that happened, and they would do all the stage shows, this big door, which still opens out of the alley, they would bring horses up with that. They would bring giant props. They might bring covered wagons up with that. Stuff to set the whole stage for the show. And that, so that was used off the alley to bring all the major props in. And like, for example, there's a little door that would have been used for like storing stuff underneath here. One person like myself can't renovate this building. You're talking, depending on the extent of renovation you want to do, to do a full-blown renovation. I'm talking about having an elevator mm -hmm. uh, that brings people up in a section and, you know, you have heat and air and everything else. Um, you know, you're anywhere from two million to four million, mm -hmm. which sounds like a lot of money. Two million is not really a lot of money to raise for something like this between grants and foundations and all kinds of things. I tell you, this opera house is considered um, in, in, in 2009, it was voted one of the most top 10 renovatable historic projects in the state of Ohio. And in the scheme of opera houses, historic theaters in the Midwest, this is considered one of the best examples of an unrenovated opera house in the entire Midwest because it's in the best condition of an unrenovated opera house. The reason for that is most buildings like this have been owned by 15 people since 1895. This building, I'm only the third owner since it was built and that's really meant a lot because what happens is uh, the, the Bells owned it, then the Bells sold it to actually a woman that was the secretary to Mr. Bell, and she agreed, she loved the building and said she would take care of it, so her and her husband, that was the Gordon family, owned it for 50, 60 years, and they didn't have the money to renovate it, obviously, but they kept it up as well as they could, and then the Gordons passed on, and their children, who were now adults, ended up selling it to me, um, maybe, you know, six or eight, so I bought it. So um, that's part of the reason that it hasn't been gutted and turned into everything and their brother and uh, been kind of looted because there's only been three owners.